Hello and welcome to the next video in this series about managing SQL Server on Amazon RDS. I'm John McCormack and today we're going to be talking about advanced configurations using RDS parameter groups. So what are parameter groups? Well first of all remember that when you're running an RDS instance you're not running a full version of SQL Server and AWS will restrict some of the permissions um, that it gives you, which is just really to keep the service stable. So you don't have access to the sysadmin role or the security admin role. And sometimes you need to be a member of those roles to make certain changes on your database server. And it's not that AWS doesn't want you to be able to make those changes. There are specific ones that it's quite happy for you to make. But the mechanism that they've introduced for doing that is through a thing called uh, parameter groups. So with a parameter group, you can make certain uh, settings changes, such as trace flags or the sort of settings that you would normally uh, need to run an SP configure command. And once you make the change, then it will just be applied to your instance. You can have multiple instances belonging to the same parameter group, so that if you find a change that works and you think that's going to work everywhere, then by changing the value in the parameter group, then that's going to be applied everywhere. Now with parameter groups, you have to know what you're doing. If you don't know what any of the settings mean, then just run it with the default settings. If there is a value you want to change, then try it out in a test or dev environment first so that you can measure what um, impact it has uh, on your instance because it could actually affect performance and not always in a positive way. So let's quickly um, step into Management Studio and we'll see how it works. So here we are in Management Studio and what I wanted to do was show you a couple of commands that you normally be able to run on a SQL Server that, that don't really work uh, when using RDS. Um, so the first thing is if you're running SP configure, that's going to give you back the value for various um, configuration settings. And the one that I'm particularly interested in is optimize for ad hoc workloads. Um, if you run the, the command with just the optimize for ad hoc workloads uh, in single quotes, then it'll bring you back just the one value you need. So at the moment it's saying that the configuration value is zero and we want to set it to 1. In SQL Server, you would just put comma 1 at the end of that command and then run reconfigure, and the status would be updated for you. So let's just give that a quick try, and we can see that that's not the case. So we don't have permission to run that SP configure command, and we don't have the permission to run the, the reconfigure either. Okay, so that's not ideal. The other thing is um, trace flags which are a way that you can get your SQL Server to vary from the default behavior. Um, so there are a few on there already, and I didn't set any of those, so um, I have to assume that they come as part of the RDS setup. Um, so there's 3226, which suppresses successful backup messages in the error log. At the end of the day, RDS is managing your backups for you. It just reduces a little bit of overhead there. Um, the other two, 7806, that gives you a DAT connection for SQL Server Express Edition. And 8017 has to do with controlling whether SQL Server creates schedulers for all logical processors. So um, that stuff's over the, over the scope of this, but there may be some that you specifically do want to set. Um, so let's uh, make a change here. So I actually wanted to change that to 1204. So... Um, say we want to set trace flag 1204, and that's to do with generating messages if you have deadlocks on your instance. So what we want to do is change this to dbcc trace on, and if we run this through, we're again going to get the error message that the user guest doesn't have permissions to run dbcc trace on. So we want to make these changes. What's the easiest way to do it? Well, the answer is parameter group. So let's dive into the AWS console and look at our instance here. So demo DB, so configuration, there we go, parameter group. So we're using the default parameter group there, okay? And 
we don't want to use a default parameter group, we want to create our own. I've already done that, so let's amend the instance so that we can change the parameter group. Scrolling down to where it tells you which parameter group that you're using, it's using the default uh, group. Let's change that to POC, which is one that I've just set up, and go down and hit continue. Now when you do this, it's going to ask you if you want it to change during the next maintenance window or apply immediately. I'd rather just get that immediately for the purposes of the demo. Okay, so let's select parameter groups on the left hand side. We can see that the two that we have, the default and the POC, and we know we're now running using the POC one. And edit parameters gives us the option to make the changes. Let's make 1204, which is the trace flag, to a 1. And let's go for optimize ad hoc workloads. Uh, just make that a 1 as well. And we will save the changes. So that's it changed. It's going to take a minute to apply. We'll find that the instance is showing modifying in a little moment. And once it has made the changes, we'll go in and see what output we're getting from Management Studio. Okay, so the status is showing available again. Let's go back into Management Studio for a quick check just to make sure things are the way that we hope for. So if we run SP Configure with the Optimize for Ad Hoc Workloads in here, we can see that the value is now of 1. That was a 0 before, so we've made the change, but we just used the parameter group to do it. If we have a look at the trace status for the global trace flags, we can see that 1204 is in there. So have fun trying that out.